Lupe Prado is a career coach who helps people figure out how to move toward more fulfillment in their jobs. If you are currently in a job situation that leaves you frustrated or feeling the Sunday scaries, my friend Lupe has tips for recognizing what may really be going on so that you can make tangible, positive changes from where you are right now. I think you'll enjoy hearing our interview so that you can be reminded that career fulfillment doesn't have to mean quitting your job overnight and risking it all. It's more of a sensitive, long-term process so that you can be sure you're working toward the dream that feels right for you and your family. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. I am so glad that you joined me today on the podcast, Lupe. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Jen, for having me. I'm really excited. Yay! So, Lupe, uh, you know, I I love, uh, as our audience knows, I like to bring in people from all different areas of business and and especially in my own network of people that I know and love. Um, so, Lupe is um, one of those special guests who is not a part of the professional organizing industry. However, she is um, a career coach and, um, a business coach. And she and I, I was so blessed, um, to have met her through the coaching certification program that I went through throughout 2019. And Lupe is based in Dallas, Texas. And I really, I mean, first of all, I just love her as a person. Um, and I have learned so much about coaching from her because she is so dedicated to this field. And Lupe, I would honestly just love for them to hear from you a little bit about your journey and how, like, how this came to be like such a passion for you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. And Jen's amazing. So <laughs> thank you so much. This is one of the biggest blessings from the program was getting to meet you. So thank you. Oh, for that's me. so sweet. Um, so coaching. So, so my background is actually in accounting. So I worked in public accounting and I worked at an oil and gas company doing financial reporting for the first eight years of my career. And, um, in that time I was working really long hours. I was really burnt out. Uh, 70 hour weeks were, um, pretty irregular thing. And, um, at that point, so that was in 2014, I hired a coach and, because I didn't know what I wanted. I knew I, I felt stuck. I felt like I wanted more. I knew I wasn't doing the work that was really aligned with my strengths. So I hired a coach and I tell everyone that after you know, my husband and my baby, she is the best thing that's ever happened to me. She changed my life. <laughs> yeah. She did. She really did. And I worked with her for years and she um, helped me um, get unstuck, helped me figure out what I was passionate about, which turned out to be coaching because I, ever since I was little, like my whole life, people have gravitated towards me um, to tell me about their problems, to tell me about what's going on. Uh, one of my strengths is listening. And so uh, it just kind of lined up where I was like, I, I'm going to start coach training. And I did this while I was doing corporate uh, and didn't tell anyone at work because I didn't want them to think I was quitting, <laughs> which I did end up quitting yeah. later. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, I didn't, I wasn't ready yet. I wouldn't know what I wanted. And um yeah. So that's kind of how I got there. I was deeply unhappy. I knew I wasn't doing the work I was supposed to be doing. It wasn't aligned. And, um, and now I am. And I really feel like I wake up excited to do the work and work with my clients. And so that's an incredible feeling. Um, that is, is such an amazing story. And my biggest question, and I think that, you know, people can get value out of this, even as they're in their professional organizing journey and business, how did you know, Lupe, that mm -hmm. you weren't really fulfilled in your job? Like, what were these signs that were to you were just like <laughs> very clear? <laughs> well, when I was at the accounting firm where I was like deeply unhappy, I, you know, it was, we talked about the Sunday blues. It was like two o'clock on a Sunday and I was already upset about Monday. Mm. Like I was dreading mm -hmm. Monday. Uh, at that point I was so upset. Like I would cry on Sunday nights. Like I'm, I just hate work. Right. So that was like a deep unhappiness. 
Uh, but then when I transitioned to um, that, the next, my next role, I just, it was just kind of like, okay, I, I, it was, the work was uh, fine. I could do it, but I wasn't excited about it. I was like, how am I going to really do this for the next 30 years or whatever? It just sounded like just really heavy. And I noticed my coworkers who were aligned with their strengths, they enjoyed what they did. Yes, it was hard work and all that, but they, they really felt uh, a sense of purpose with the work. And I just didn't, I couldn't connect to the numbers, to the, yeah, because it wasn't like directly related to people, which is where my strengths really lie. So I think if you are feeling like, is this it? Um, I really feel like I'm meant for more or I'm not using my strength, really using my strengths. There's something kind of like you keep thinking about, but kind of keep dismissing. We usually, I see this in client. We usually have something we're passionate about. We, we dismiss it as like, no, like that's not a thing that, you, that your, your audience might, might find that like, oh, it's professional organizing. Like I would really like to do that, but no, I can do it. And there's usually that little voice, that whisper that's saying, I don't know, this isn't it. So that's what I would offer. That's kind of how I knew. That that's so good. Then that's such good advice. Um, do you feel like you had some awareness at that time that even though you were probably like on paper, I mean, you were good at what you did, but you said when you, you could tell that you weren't really in alignment with your strengths. Like, how did you know that it was something more about like people or impacting people? Um, did you know that that was what was missing or did it just feel like there was just this like vague sense of what was missing? Mm. Well, I noticed like, you know, in my office, there was always someone coming in to talk, not about, well, first maybe with a work request, but staying to talk about, this is what's going on in my relationships. This is what's going on with my goals. Maybe I want to, you know, work out, oh, I listen to them. And so it was this constant, that was a highlight of my day. Like when people came in and talked to me, like about what was going on, I listened and people um, always talked about my energy. Like, oh, I, we love being around Lupe. Like it's like, because I tend to have like a very like positive attitude about things. Um, so I realized, okay, my favorite part of my work is when people come talk to me about non-work stuff. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, yeah, so that was like, okay, it's something, something people related um, that I didn't, and I majored in accounting because I wanted stability. I wanted financial security. I had that, but it wasn't enough. Uh, that's a really good insight. Um, so when you did start, like when you reached out and first started working with your coach, who, like you said, is, is your third favorite person ever so far, (laughs) (laughs) um, I'm sure you'll like name your next child after her. Um, what, what were some of the first things that like she, that she had you do or think about that, like really, um, impacted you and made you realize like, oh, there is something more here for me to explore. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things I uh, remember her asking me to do was um, she, she she said it was like an activity, like as if we were going into a fitting room, she said, okay, well, what have you always thought about doing? And I thought, well, I'd always kind of considered being a high school counselor. She said, okay. So she said, pretend you're going into a fitting room. What would you do? You'd try, try something on, see if you like it. And if you don't, you can just put it back. Right. And so she asked me, well, how could you do that? So I thought about it. Oh, well, maybe I could reach out to my high school counselor. And she said, exactly. Okay. So why don't you, she she suggested I call my high school counselor. And this is like way after graduate. I mean, this is what I hadn't talked to my (laughs) counselor since I graduated high school. I just had no contact. Um, Why don't you call her and see, ask her some questions. And I thought, so you even came up with a little script about what I was going to ask so nervous. I thought she wouldn't answer. It's going to go to voicemail. She answered the, and I said, hi, I'm one of your students from back in the day. Um, I just want to 10 minutes of your time to talk about what you do every day. (laughs) And she said, oh, sure. And then I asked her questions and I said, what do you do? Do you get to mentor students? What, like that really, I feel really passionate about that. Like maybe I'd want to do that. I'm thinking about going back to school, changing careers. And she said, you know, maybe at other school districts, but what I do every day is mainly administrative. You should see the stack of binders behind me. And, you know, like, if that's what you want to do, I don't know that this is the role for you. 
And I said, oh, wow, she was very, she'd been doing it for 25 years. So she's a, she's very honest. And she said, but maybe you should talk to one of the younger counselors. She might have a different perspective. So I called her and she had, a, she was more positive, but she had a similar kind of thing. And so that was me trying it on and realizing very quickly that that was not it. It wasn't it. Like I wanted the one-on-one -on -one interaction and it sounded like that was going to be more of the things I didn't like to do, which is kind of all that paperwork or. She said scheduling student schedules and doing all of that was kind of more of her work. So I was like, okay, that's not going to work. So fitting, the fitting room concept was one. And then the other one that I really remember, the way I do with clients is the ideal day. She said, if I could wave a magic wand and tomorrow I wake up and I get to live my ideal work day, what does my day look like? What am I doing in the morning? Work, am I working from home? Am I working from an office? Am I working one-on-one -on -one with clients? And like, what does it look like? And I got really clear. I walked, you know, maybe I wake up in the morning, have my coffee and meditate. I work with clients one-on-one. -on -one. This was years ago. So I was nowhere near that vision. Like, but that was what I really dreamed about. Mm -hmm. And it gave me a lot of clarity. And, and I find that that gives clients a lot of clarity, the ideal day concept, because a lot of times we don't even allow ourselves to dream of that day because it just seems like, oh, I can't get there or that's not possible. Um, but then it kind of gets our brain to subconsciously start working towards that day. Um, so, so the fitting room concept and then the ideal day are two things. That, um, that's, that's really good because it, it, I think both of those have to do with like visioning and making things real and making mm -hmm. things feel real. Mm -hmm. And then if it, like, if it does still kind of spark that fire, then it's like, oh, okay, now, like, what actions can I take to move forward? And, and I wanted to say too, that that does remind me a lot too, of when I first, um, I first, uh, learned that professional organizing was even a real thing. I think it had, it was really born out of a knowledge that I already had that my ideal day involved being like in other people's mm. like beautiful homes. Mm. And I was like, how can I do that? <laughs> because I didn't get an interior design degree. And I was like, and I really just like, I love like, you know, getting my hands and things and, and making things like look good and like actually taking like physical action. I really liked that. And so I think it was almost like a, it was probably a visioning exercise that brought me to that mm. point in the first place, because I don't think that I heard about professional organizing first. I think it was more of like mm. a, what can I do to like get inside other people's houses <laughs> and just like help them? Mm. Um, which is, which is really hilarious. Right. So like that was kind of how, you know, every, every journey starts somewhere. So it's sort of like a, a vision of like, you know, moving, um, imperfectly towards some vision of, um, more of like what you would like your, like, like your life to be. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. So I honestly feel like one thing that like organizers and coaches of all kinds have in common is really, um, even though, you know, I've said before, like professional organizers sort of work on like the environmental level and that it like really, um, you know, affects you on many levels because you made changes there. Whereas I think coaching, you're sort of working on like a thought level or a belief level. And then that goes on to impact your life from like multiple layers. So it's almost like change and growth, mm -hmm. but approach mm -hmm. from like two completely different like two completely mm -hmm. different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With coaching, it's like we're starting internally and then we're working our way out. And, and then it's like the internal, the mindset, all that stuff, it affects everything. It affects our environment, our relationships, our goals, everything, which is why um, I fell in love with it. Like working with my coach because I'd never even heard of that concept. And so I didn't realize there were so many things, so many like, and people talk about this a lot in coaching, but like the limiting beliefs I had about myself, about what I could do, about my relationships. There were a lot of like stories I was telling myself that I was stuck and I didn't realize it until someone was there to kind of say, Hey, this is what I'm hearing. What do you think? And it like allowed myself to kind of really see myself and what I was thinking. And, and it's a really powerful, powerful thing. I compare it to like a personal trainer kind of working with a personal trainer, like they can see what we might be missing or needing more of and, and holding us accountable and helping us work through that. 
Um, that's a really good analogy. So one thing I want to share, I want to like transition into like the now where you are, where you are working with clients now. And I will just tell you guys, I have, I have been Lupe's client <laughs> in practice plenty of times. And one thing she's really good at, and I just want to say this is that, um, you know, it, especially with this topic of career transitions. I mean, I've said to you, I've come to you one-on-one -on -one before and said, I want to make sure that before I'm making this major decision in my life, that it's something that I'm very clear about moving toward and that I'm not just running away from mm. something I don't want to do. And, and I wonder too, like for you, how much has that come up or how can you like recognize sometimes like when a client is like, I I'm, I'm honestly, <laughs> like I'm looking just to get away from something I hate. Like, how do you help them move into figuring out like what it is they actually do want versus mm -hmm. just what they don't want to do anymore? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's really a, that's a huge concept, right? Like sometimes we don't realize we're running away instead of running towards, right? Like <laughs> yeah. that's huge. <laughs> so, but I think for me, like in my example, right? Like I was at the, uh, at this, you know, other company where I was really burnt out and happy. I, I was running away at that point, mm. but I was running away, but I was also running away to create more space. So sometimes this is what I see in my clients. They're so burnt out. They're so overworked. They don't have the space, the capacity to think about, you know, launching the side business or changing careers. So in that instance, what my coach helped me and what I help my clients is sometimes just pivoting a little, like leaving the work that's like toxic and go into something where there's more space to think about it. Or sometimes we don't have the runway, the financial mm -hmm. runway. I see this a lot with clients. Like they want to launch their business, but they don't, they can't afford to live off the new income. Right. So it's like transitioning right. to something that allows us the space to create that side business, to work on the passion project. And so and that would, I think would count as kind of like running away, but it's, it's like a pivot to then, set the foundation up to like run towards. So for me, that in between role really gave me space to think about, to go to training, to think about what did I really want versus like at that first company, I couldn't because I was so, I was working seven days a week. I didn't have the space. And so I see that with clients where like they might run away from something that's bad, but maybe they pivot so there's more space or they pivot so that they have financial security, more still continue that financial security and then they can do, you know, um, build a business, launch the passion project or whatever. Did that answer your question? A hundred percent. So what you're saying is, is that it doesn't have to be done all in one instant no, transformation. No. <laughs> Cause I think sometimes that's what people like wish for. They're just like, I want to walk out of my job and burn it all down and start all <laughs> over and like start a business. But like that you can't actually, you can't, I mean, you, one can do that. And some, yes. some, some people of my listeners do. know that, you know, when I, when I launched my organizing business, it was definitely out of like a, like, I'm just making this happen move. Like I yes. refuse to be in this, you know, intolerable situation anymore. And I, you know, but that involves a lot of risk and not everybody's comfortable with that kind of risk. So, you know, smart girls that come along and are like, okay, I'm looking to make a career, a career transition. <laughs> they can get a lot out of working with a coach because they're making sure like, okay, I don't want to leave this, this, um, job that's unfulfilling that I don't like, and then not recognize the patterns that put me there in the first mm. place. It's like working with a coach helps you really have that awareness so that the next choice you make, well, again, it's not going to ever be the most perfect choice. It is, it is more enlightened and more like takes into account everything about about you as a person and like what you do really need. I just think that that is um, brilliant, which is of course why I do want to like help people on this level now is yeah. like, don't, don't do like I did and just, you know, uh, look to escape and then figure it all out later. Cause that's, that's the more um, uh, stressful way to go about things. Yes. I think you're, you're completely right. And, you know, I, I worked with a client um, last year who she hired me after she'd quit. Um, and she, um, she wasn't, she didn't have that financial security yet. And so she was really, and I think this is what happens sometimes. It's like, so I hate my job, so I'm just going to quit, but there's no safety net. There's no financial, you know, financial security there, foundation or whatever. And there's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, and it just leads to some deep unhappiness too, even though they might, you know, we might be trying to do the thing we're passionate about that stress kind of just takes that away. So I think that kind of like, um, 
middle of it part where we're still kind of transitioning still have the safety net is really important um and then i think a lot of times this is me too i thought i have to just quit and launch my business without a safety net with all the things right i read a book called originals by adam grant and he talked he studied people who were really successful because he was asked to invest in warby parker and he didn't because they were phd students his phd students and he said are you quitting the phd program to start warby parker and they said no we're going to keep doing a PhD program and launch the business too, because we want safety net in case it doesn't work out. And he said, no, I'm not going to invest then. And that's one of his biggest regrets because they launched it and now it's huge. And he said, well, what did I miss? And so he wrote this book studying people who are super successful. And he found that actually people who um, do these big things take calculated risks. So they took a calculated risk by staying in the PhD program and launching the business. Bill Gates took a calculated risk um, launching Microsoft, but still had an approved leave from his Ivy League, Ivy League school. So it's really interesting that we think everybody just quit and launches their thing and super successful, but that's not necessarily the case. Ooh, okay, so I do want to point out, this is a good time for people to remember that even though you might think on the outside that people do make these big risks that sometimes they have safety nets of like family or, you know, friends or a, a trust fund that you don't even know about. And so right. like, do not judge like how, how committed you are to your business based on other people who do those crazy things. It, because you just don't always know like what it is that they do have that was there to catch them if it didn't work. And sometimes those are the things that give them the confidence that it is going to be okay and that they can figure it out as they go. And so they can, sort of afford, afford to like go out on a limb. Um, so I think that's just something of note that I don't yeah. think I've ever really pointed out on the podcast before is that like, you, you can't always tell uh, everything about a success story just yes. based on the outside. Yes. And like, for example, I'm going to be really open and say like, the reason I was able to quit my job and launch my business was because I have my husband as kind of like that uh, was a backstop or safety net. Like he supported me. We said, okay, this is going to take me a couple years to really, or a few years to get back to what I was making in corporate America. And that's okay. We plan mm -hmm. for it. We like, and I think that's the case for a lot of people. And maybe that's not as openly uh, shared. I can think of a few six really successful entrepreneur, women entrepreneurs, and they talk about their success and how they built their business. But they never mention that their husbands had really successful careers. And that was kind of a safety net and there's nothing wrong with that. But like, I've, you know, I've seen in some people, they're like, I don't have a financial, that financial security and I just want to quit my job. That can cause a lot of pressure and deep unhappiness too, because we need that foundation to, um, to get there. So I think it's okay. Like we don't know what's going on. You're right. We don't know. Like there's, maybe there's a trust fund. Maybe there's, I don't know. There's a lot of things and that's okay. It's just, we don't need to compare ourselves to those people because everyone's in a different situation. So we have to do what works best for us. Yeah, I completely agree. I, again, going back to what works best for you, because sometimes people are like, well, I don't like, I don't want to just like, uh, go full time in my organizing business. I want to take it very slowly and I want to be really, really ready. And it's like, yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. Everybody has to like weigh what's important to them. And sometimes even when you like on paper have all the skills that it would take to be crazy successful in any career, any business. Um, even when you have all the skills, it's like, again, the, the added stress and the emotional roller coaster of not having steady income right away when you are building a new thing. Um, it, it can be too much to handle. Like it's just, it it's a can lot. Like take down really good people. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so that was, I'm really glad we went that direction a little bit. Cause I think that's really important for, um, for women in all stages to hear. Um, it's part of that comparison game of like things that you can't even see, you know, are you loving the pro organizer studio podcast? I know that's a mouthful. So we call it T pop for short, help us reach new listeners and bring in even more amazing guests, by leaving a review for T pop through your podcasting app. It truly makes our day to know that you are listening. So Lupe, I want to also um, dive in a little bit because um, we're recording this in May of 2020. And so right now there are a lot of people who are working from home for the first time and experiencing all new, like, and this kind of like ties 
coaching and career and like home and, and, and the organized environment kind of all comes together in one topic for just a minute. I want to ask you when you're talking with your coaching clients lately, what are you hearing from them as far as like how being at home has impacted their work or their perception of their work or their like future goals for their career? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I, um, I always tell people, I'll start with this. I, I always tell people that, you know, after the first, regardless of what kind of coach you're working with, um, after the first few sessions, it's all life coaching <laughs> because we're whole people. We're not, we can't silo our work into one bucket. Mm-hmm. And then like it, it, how we do one thing really is how we do everything. And um, one thing that I've seen in clients right now that's kind of been magnified is energy drainers. So uh, for a lot of people, it's the first time working from home, like consistently, right? Or less, you know, five days a week. And so um, there's a lot of things that are draining our energy. And so a concept I like to share with clients is called tolerations. Tolerations are the small energy drainers in our life that we tend to dismiss because they don't seem that important. So it's the uncomfortable desk chair. It's the stack of mail on the corner of your desk. It's the uncomfortable shoes or the curtains, the color of the curtains that you like, you know, you hate the color of the curtains and you keep meaning to change it. Every time we look at the curtains that we dislike, every time we sit on the chair that's uncomfortable, it like drains our energy. And right now with everything that's going on in the world, our energy is pretty, there's so many things draining it. And so these little things, we just meant, oh, the curtain, that's not important. I have bigger things to do, to worry about. So we don't, replace the curtains. We don't replace the chair. We don't fix the squeaky door. And these things are now because we're all working from home are a bigger deal. So I tell clients to make a list of 20 things that are, are tolerations for them. When I first learned about this, I thought, I don't have 20 things, but then I started writing them and oh my gosh, it started flowing. Like, like I was on a roll Oh, the chair up the desk up the squeaky door oh the curtains that you know there was a whole bunch of things and so then we can start knocking them out order that replace the shoes uh, hang the curtains that we meant to hang uh all the things and what i've seen too with clients is like working from our couch from our desk it's not it just it's very draining and at first it seems appealing because we've been working at our office and it's like yes we can work from anywhere now but it's draining. And so I, I suggest having like a designated workspace, even if we're in a small apartment, like just our little corner, that's like our desk, making it as comfortable as possible. So there aren't a lot of tolerations, making it pretty, putting like I have, I'm working in a separate room now because of what's going on. So I can stay focused. I have a picture frame. I have my vision board. I have like a candle, like I try to make it a, even though it's a small corner, so that it doesn't drain my energy, mm. um, which is so important right now. Like this is what I'm seeing a lot with people because it, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of stress. And so removing the energy drainers. So every time now I, you know, open the door that used to be squeaky and I sprayed it, it lifts my energy because I'm like, ah, oh, it's nice and quiet. The chair, I must sit in a nice chair back here. It's so nice to sit in my comfortable chair as I'm doing this podcast. I'm not drained by it. So that's really important. I think, and, and for professional organizers, it's like, huge because going into someone's home it's like sharing that concept with people like hey these are the things that are draining your energy what are they what bothers you and addressing them helping them address them like oh that's huge because their energy is lifted and they can now have more energy to work on their goals to do the things they really want to do um that's an amazing takeaway in fact i feel like we could do a whole nother podcast about just that because i mean it's great like that you know, that's very similar to what, um, what I teach my students about going on a consultation is it's not about you assessing what their house looks like. It's about asking them essentially that question. I don't say it that way, but what are you simply tolerating? What is pissing you off? Like what is really bugging you? Because that's the order that we work from. We're not like, we're not here to create a picture perfect house. We're here to create a home that makes you internally feel like, everything is Mm -hmm. in its right place and that, you know, the important things are being taken care of. So yeah, no, I think that's a very applicable tip 
to anyone listening who is working from home right now, but also um, if you want kind of a new way or maybe a very context of COVID way to talk about the value of organizing with your clients right now, we can talk about energy mm. drains because if our house, we're expecting a lot out of our homes right now, our homes have to be a place where we are mm -hmm. able to work, able to be around our family and work around our family yes. <laughs> and still be like our, our haven and like peaceful place. And that's a lot to ask. And it's a lot to ask when you have not really thought about how much these things um, really do impact you before. So. Yes. It's huge. Um, Lupe, tell, tell everybody a little bit more about coaching with you, what that looks like right now, where they can find more information and where they can find you on the internet. Yeah. So clients work with me on transition. So like they might be looking to figure out what they really want to do, or they're looking to launch their side hustle or passion project. So I offer a 30 minute session and uh, I'll demo like 10 to 15 minutes of coaching, what it's like and, and coaching and the, the type of coaching that I do, I won't give advice. I'll ask a bunch of questions to help uh, my clients figure it out for themselves. So it, it's going to be like, I'm holding up a mirror for them to see themselves more clearly. It's going to be different from therapy and that we don't look at the past. We focus on the present and the future and, but it can be very therapeutic. Uh, and so it's like, you don't need a coach, but it accelerates your journey to your goals. It, it helps you get clear. It helps you get energy. And so that's what I love about it. It's like, oh, I get to see progress in every session. There's a check-in. So it's amazing. So, so sample session. And then when I start working with the client, we get really clear on what do we want to be celebrating at the end of our six sessions, at the end of our three sessions. So we're like one client, she wanted to launch her podcast. So we, we scheduled our final session and we had a champagne toast because we worked throughout the time and like working progress towards her podcast. And so we get really clear and then we start every session we work towards and there's accountability and there's someone like I'm, t I'm reflecting back what I'm seeing, what's holding us back the story. So it's, it's a really cool process, which can you tell I like really love, <laughs> but, um, yeah. And so uh, you can find me at lupeprado.com. So L U P E P R A D O.com. And on Instagram, I'm at Lupe Prado Coaching. And I'd love for you to follow me. Or um, if you're interested in a session, if you found what I talked about uh, helpful, I'd love to work with you. Um, schedule a session. Well, Lupe, listen, you are, <laughs> you, I can attest as a, as a, um, not just a friend, but you've given me so much amazing. I mean, you, let me, let me state it correctly. You have enabled me to, you know, see in that mirror, like you said, you hold it up and it's like, okay, here are the things that I'm bringing. And you're like, I, here's what I'm hearing. Here's what I'm hearing in your voice. Here's what I, um, uh, have noticed about you and your energy and about what's important to you. Um, and you know, I think one thing that is so interesting about the two of us is that we, we do have very different, um, communication styles, but we really have learned a lot from each other. And I just have gotten a lot from you in terms of really being able to listen to, I know you said at the beginning, you're a good listener, but you listen to people's energy. And I mm -hmm. think that that's the thing that you, um, I mean, I guess every coach, of course, brings that to the table to some extent, but that is one skill that I hope that I have picked up from like being your client. So I just want to say it really, it's almost a little bit like addictive because right, it's not therapy, but you're like, well, Ooh, like now that, now that she's asked me these questions and now that I've realized this about myself, it's like, I can continue to like work on it on my own and then bring her the next thing that I um, am seeing, or I really want to make some progress on. So I just, I'm just saying like, I, I'm not just, you know, I'm not just a believer. Like, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a user <laughs> of, um, of this service. And I do really recommend it because like I said, I think for anybody who is considering making a transition, it really helps to have somebody who is not a friend or family member for you to talk with about what this all really means to you. And do you want to just keep changing just to change things up? Or do you really want to change in order to like move forward for growth? And that's one thing that, um, I see, uh, 
Lupe is very passionate about because she's been through that process. So it's really, really good. Thank you so much, Jen. And thank you for having me and for being such a great friend. Jen, just don't cut this out, Jen. She is such an inspiration. Like I really respect her so, so much. I like look up to you and you're amazing. And so I'm so grateful for our friendship. So thank you so much for doing this, for having the podcast, for everything that you do. You're, you're incredible. Well, thank you. That means a lot to me. It'll be hard not to edit that out. Um, I want to ask you, I want to ask you one like parting question um, just for fun before we go. Um, Lupe, I feel like every time you and I talk, you always like share amazing resources because you're such a reader and you're into a lot of other podcasts. What is, what is your favorite book or podcast that you're like really into right now? Mm, okay. Um, okay. So a book that I keep recommending that I read re relatively recently is you probably read it, but like it's Atomic Habits by James clear. And I've kept her hearing about it and I, I've read books on habits. So I kind of procrastinated on reading that one, but oh my gosh, it's so good. And the biggest takeaway is that we usually, for me, was that we start with the outcome. We want to run the 10 K we run to want to run the half marathon, but what we're really after is who we become in the process. So what we really need to start with is who do we want to become by achieving this goal? And when we get really clear on that, that doing the thing, going for the run, it's evidence that that is who we are. So I'm a person that runs every day. I'm a healthy person that takes care of myself, that, you know, whatever it is. So it's huge. I love that book. And I recommend it to all my clients because it, it's allowed me to create habits, consistent habits in my life. It's allowed me to work out. It's allowed me to do a lot of great things for myself that I was not consistent doing before. So I highly recommend that book. Mm. Yes. And then podcasts. Um, I love don't keep your day job. <laughs> and it's not about not keeping your day job. It's just really inspiring. I, I, I really love that podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, I think those are two resources that I'd love to recommend. Well, that's awesome. Um, I think that the Atomic Habits, for sure, that's useful to our audience on multiple levels, not just for themselves, but again, something that they can learn, apply with themselves, and also apply in their businesses with their clients, because every single one of these things is just another, another tool in your toolbox to um, help people uh, in their homes or virtually or whatever it is that, um, you're offering right now. So this has been, Ooh, this has been such a valuable talk <laughs> and I really appreciate you creating this co-creating this amazing episode with me. Thank you for being on Lupe and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for listening to the pro organizer studio podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.